Back in episode 193, I covered how to create a tableless model. That is, I needed to use some of the features of Active Record, but I did not want it to be backed by the database. Now, the technique I showed there is quite a bit of a hack because it's something that Active Record wasn't designed to do. But now in Rails 3.0, we now have a feature called Active Model, which makes this much nicer. Now, before I get into the details of Active Model, let me first describe what we have in our application. So here's a contact us form, kind of a classic example of this, and that I created this contact form through a scaffolding. So there's a model called message, which is currently backed by active record, which means we're currently managing messages through our database. But I don't want that. I want to make this a tableless model so that we're just sending emails through this form and not managing them in the database. Now it's a good idea whenever you're in this situation to really double check yourself and make sure that your requirements are to have a tableless model because there are often good side effects of storing the records in the database. It acts as a good backup. It also makes it easier to move uh, the message sending into a queue and it's in a background process. But for these specific requirements and in this example, let's just make this a tableless model. Now, if we dive into the code of our message model, you can see that it currently inherits from active record base but we don't want that because we don't want it to uh, have a database backend. So let's remove that. But now we have a problem. Our validation functionality will not work because that's what Active Record provides us. So we need to pull that functionality back using Active Model. Now, if we take a look at the Rails 3 source code itself, you can see that Active Model is listed here right next to Active Record. And so what the core team did is took everything in Active Record that was not specific to the database backend and moved it out into Active Model. So Active Record still relies heavily on Active Model for doing all this functionality that's not specific to the database. So that you know Active Model is well tested and fully featured. So it's great for you to use outside of Active Record. So if we take a look at the contents of Active Model, you can easily see what functionality it provides, such as callbacks and dirty tracking and serialization and even validations. And this is exactly what we're looking for here. So if we take a look at the contents of this file, we can see the built-in documentation here, and you can see it's fairly easy to use. Basically just include the validations module, and then just provide getter methods for the attributes which you're calling validations on. So going back to our message model, we can include that validations module, and then add some accessor methods for our name, email, and content columns. Now this is enough to get our validation functionality working, but it's not enough to get our model to behave like our controller expects it to. So if we take a look at our controller, you can see right now it's just basic scaffolding where we create a new message passing in our attributes and then we try to save the message. But obviously this won't work now because we no longer have a database backed model. So this new method here won't work because we don't have an initialized method which takes a hash of attributes. We can create that. And also save won't work obviously because uh, we aren't trying to save the record anymore. Instead, let's just check if it's valid because we have some validations on our model. And then we'll just send it if it is. So the last thing we need to do is going back to our message model here is now define an initialized method which now takes a hash of attributes and we'll have it default to an empty hash. And so in here we just want to loop through all of these attributes and we have our name and our value for each attribute, and we just want to assign the value which is passed in here. So we can use the send method to assign access that accessor method. Uh, we'll just say our name with an equal sign will be that access method, and we'll just assign our value to that. And so now each attribute that's passed into this initialized method will trigger that given setter method and assign that attribute. Now we can try reloading our page here and see if this functionality works. And uh, oh, it doesn't. We get this mirror error message undefined method two key on our message model, and that's inside of our form four call. So obviously Rails itself is expecting our model to have some functionality that it does not support. So we need to add that. Now rather than guessing everything that Rails expects our model to include, uh, there's a nice lint test included inside of Active Model, which allows you to easily check whether or not your given custom model uh, behaves like Rails expects a model to behave. So you basically just include this lint test module into your test case and that will check uh, its functionality. You can see two key here is already mentioned at the top and is actually a fairly short file and there's really not a lot that Rails 3 models are expected to behave like.
Now in this case here, we can easily get our lint test passing by including a couple modules. So the first one here is conversion, and this basically provides that two key method and several others for converting it into various forms. Um, so basically, you, all you have to do is define this persisted method, which we're going to just have false because it's not a, a persisted model, um, and that way uh, it can handle the two key and two param behavior properly. The only other module we need to add is the naming module, and actually you just extend this module because it has some class methods. So you just extend that, and that's all you have to do. So going back to our message model, we just need to add the uh, conversion module and extend the naming module. And then finally just add the persisted method and have it return false, and that way our conversion module will know how to behave. So now if we reload our page here, hey, it's all working. And now our message model meets all the requirements that Rails 3 relies on in a model. We could even try submitting this form here. And you can see that, well, validations are working too. So this is all functioning properly. Now I've only covered a little bit of what Active Model provides you, but hopefully it's enough to get you started uh, exploring it on your own. I just encourage you to download the Rails 3 repository, open up the Active Model directory, and just explore the various modules that it provides. And really it's well documented and well structured, so just find something you think you might find useful, uh, just check out the code and you'll see a lot of documentation explaining how to get it up and running in your app. So whether you're building a simple tableless model like I did in this episode or a fully featured ORM, uh, I encourage you to check out Active Model because it provides a lot of features that uh, I think you'll find useful.